Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. I'm a Linode developer advocate. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is setting up Pi-hole on Linode using their one-click installer but we are not going to be stopping there. Once we have Pi-hole set up, we will then set up a recursive DNS server using Unbound and then use PyVPN creating our very own virtual private network that we can connect to from anywhere in the world. So in the simplest terms, PyVPN is going to allow us to securely tunnel our network through our Linode, and we're gonna be doing this using the wire guard option. And then Unbound is going to allow us to communicate with the authoritative name servers directly, so then we don't have to use a third-party name server such as Google or Cloudflare. Now, this may cause slightly slower loading times the first time you connect to websites, but this information will be stored and cached, so you'll have better performance going forward. And then the cherry on on top is going to be Pi-hole actually filtering out ads using their extensive block list and giving us a wonderful dashboard to go ahead and manage all of this. So right now I am on the Linode Create dashboard and we're gonna set up Pi-hole. So to do this really easy, this is saving us a lot of time using this one-click installer. We're gonna go over to Marketplace and then scroll down until we find Pi-hole. So here it is, gonna give that a select, scroll down, and then from there we could go ahead and set up our password. So just for now, I'm gonna use the same password as I have on the node here. You're gonna to want to create a limited pseudo user. It's just good security practice. And for this install, we're not gonna be using a custom domain name. So for now, we could go ahead and skip the API token, subdomain, domain, and the email address there. We have our image options here. The only option at the moment is Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. It's gonna work perfectly fine. For region, you're gonna to wanna to take an extra bit of consideration here because this is going to be a VPN. So if you would prefer this to be on a Canadian server or a German server, that, that's something you're gonna to want to consider. For me, personally, speed is gonna be the most important thing. And I have the, the quickest ping with the California server here, so I'm gonna select that one. For this, the Nanode one gigabyte plan is gonna be completely fine. Uh, do use the link in the description for a $100 60 day credit when you go ahead and create your Linode account. So you can go ahead and play around with this today. So from there, we can scroll down, give it a label. For now, this is gonna work completely fine. We're gonna give this a root password. And that is about it. We're gonna go ahead and create our Linode. So click that, it's gonna load for a second and take us to our dashboard. And what this is gonna do is allow us to monitor the actual installation. So in about five or 10 minutes, it's gonna prompt us to log in. And that's when we know that Pi-hole is gonna be all set up and ready to go. This is awesome because it's doing a lot of things for us. It's updating all the firewall rules and everything. So it, it's gonna be a pretty easy process here. All right, so it's been a little bit of time. Let's drag in this Lish console here. We can see it says the installation is complete. So we should be able to go and check to see if this was installed properly. All we need to do is copy this IP address, open up a new tab, paste that IP address in, go forward slash admin, and it should take us to our admin dashboard. Here we are. So I'm just gonna keep that open for now and let's copy the SSH access right here. So give that a copy and what I'm gonna do now is open up the terminal. So here we are, I am in Windows at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this, paste in what we just copied. And I'm gonna switch this to my limited pseudo user. So I'm gonna change this from root to Brandon. Uh, this is my server so I can verify that this is okay and then type in the password. And once we are in, we're gonna do some pretty simple server administrative stuff at first. And most important is to run a full system update. So sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade. And we're gonna go dash y just to automatically confirm that I want all of the updates available to me. And we can see there, there's about four packages being updated. So we'll just go ahead and wait for that real quick. So it just finished up there. Now, one thing we're gonna check is to make sure our host name is correct. If you go ahead and type host name, we can see it is a linodeusercontent.com. That's perfect. If we open up our web browser real fast, you can see right here, this is your host name. So you wanna make sure these match. If this said something else, you wanna copy this and you'd wanna run a sudo hostname ctl set dash host name, and then paste over what it says over on Pi-hole. Another thing we wanna check is our time zone. So we do time, date, CTL, enter, 
And this is actually incorrect, so we're gonna go ahead and set our time zone. So we're just gonna add sudo in front of that and then do a set dash time zone. And for me, I know I am America dash loss underscore angeles. Hit enter. And now if I check the time zone, you can see it is good to go. Now, you should match this up to where you placed your server and or where your uh, server location is. And if you do want to see all your time zones, you could just do a uh, time date CTL list time zones, hit enter, and it will give you just about everything that you can select from. So I'm gonna go control C to back out of there. And now what we're gonna do is install upbound so we can set up recursive DNS. So then we don't have to rely on some sort of third party. So to install unbound, you just type in sudo apt install unbound, go ahead and hit enter. And then we're gonna want to hit enter to proceed with the installation. And now it's gonna give us something that looks like there was an error, there is not. We just need to go ahead and fix the configuration. You can see right there, it failed to start the unbound DNS server. And this right here is the official documentation for Unbound. So what we could do is go ahead and scroll down and we're gonna to wanna to copy in this configuration file here. And it's gonna to need to be in this location. So what we can do is give this a copy, go back over to our terminal and do sudo nano and then paste in that. It's gonna be in the etsy unbound unbound conf dot d in the pihole conf. So hit enter. And now what we're gonna do is copy and paste over this entire configuration file. So go ahead and select that, give that a control C, and then let's paste it on over into Nano. Now the main reason that we're doing this, or one of the main things in this configuration file, is changing the port from 53 to 5335 because Pi-hole is currently using port 53 and we do not want it to interfere with our Pi-hole installation. So in this case, our normal Pi-hole installation is going to act as our DNS server, and that is gonna forward any requests to unbound on port 5335. And then unbound will go out and find those authoritative name servers, and then forward that information back over to Pi-hole, in which Pi-hole will go ahead and strip out all those ads and deliver the content to you. So from here, control O, enter to save that out, control X, and now what we're gonna to want to do with this new configuration file is restart the unbound service. So it's just sudo service unbound restart, hit enter. And now we can confirm that this is all proper with a dig command. So we're gonna do dig pihole.net at 127.0.0.1 dash P for the port and then that uh, 5335 port, hit enter and all this looks good, there was no error. So now what we're gonna to need to do is log into Pi-hole and change our upstream DNS settings. And that's pretty easy to do. We're just gonna go back over to Pi-hole here. We're gonna log in. And then here we're gonna go ahead and input the password we created over on the node. Once you have that inputted, I'm gonna go ahead and let it remember me and then log in. So from here, what we're gonna to want to do is go down, go to settings, and then go over to DNS. You can see right now, the two selections for IPv4 is the Google DNS servers. Let's go ahead and uncheck those. We don't wanna use Google servers. We want to have all this running locally here on the node. So we're gonna go ahead and add a custom one. And this is going to be what we just checked. So the 127.0.0.1, and then a hashtag or pound sign, depending on how old you are. And then 5335. So from there, we could go ahead and scroll down, save these changes, and now it will go ahead and find all the uh, domain and DNS information itself. So now actually connecting to this and using this isn't really possible in a safe way without doing it through a VPN. So luckily, there is a beautiful tool here called Pi VPN, which is actually really easy to set up. It's a little bash script here. So what we're gonna do is copy this over head over to our terminal and just paste that in, hit enter, and then it's gonna go ahead and download all the files it needs, make sure it has all the prerequisite packages. So you can see it checked for everything it needs. Most everything's already installed. It's going to need a couple packages. And here we are. This installer will transform your Raspberry Pi into an open VPN or WireGuard server. Ignore the Raspberry Pi. We'll, we'll see what that does in just a sec. We're gonna continue. It says here that we're gonna need a static IP address to function properly, being that this is on the node, we should be 
fine. And you can see here, since we think you are not using a Raspbian or a Raspberry Pi, they're not gonna configure a static IP for us. That is perfectly fine, okay. And now we're gonna create a local user to hold our configuration files. We're just gonna go ahead and stick with that limited pseudo user we created earlier. So I'm gonna hit tab and hit okay. And for this guide, we are gonna be using WireGuard. If you have experience and you prefer to use OpenVPN, you could go ahead and use that. But I feel that WireGuard is uh, just a little bit better in my personal opinion. So I'm gonna hit okay and continue. And now from here, this is our WireGuard port. You're just gonna wanna keep that to the default. So I'm gonna hit tab and go okay. Yes, that is correct. And it says right here, we have detected a Pi-hole installation. Do you want us to use it as the DNS server for the VPN? Uh, so you'll get ad blocking on the go. That sounds absolutely perfect. Let's say yes. And now for this, I'm not gonna use the public IP address. Let's actually go ahead and switch this over to the DNS entry. I went ahead and used the down arrow and the space bar to select DNS entry, tab, enter. And then what we're gonna do is paste in our host name one more time. So let's go over to Pi-hole, grab our host name here, give that a quick copy and paste that on in. This way is not completely necessary, it's just my personal preference. So from there, let's go ahead and hit okay. So this right here is going to be our public DNS name, the linodeusercontent.com address with our IP address up in front. So hit enter for yes. And now these server keys are gonna be generated. So let's go ahead and hit okay to continue. So now since we're gonna have one port open, it's going to be recommended that we enable unintended upgrades. So let's just go ahead and hit okay and say yes. So we can have all the uh, security patches. And now it's telling us to run a uh, Pi VPN ad to create our client profiles. We are gonna be doing that in just a sec, but let's hit okay for now. And it is strongly recommended that you reboot after the installation. Would you like to do that now? Let's go ahead and say yes. So the system's gonna reboot, okay. So this shouldn't take too long, probably two, three minutes. Uh, the connection is closed, so I will be right back when it is ready. All right, so the server should have rebooted, so we're gonna go ahead and re-log in to this server just with our SSH command, there we go. And what we're gonna be doing is creating a client to actually be able to connect to this VPN. And I'm gonna be testing this out by using the WireGuard application on a Pixel phone. And the commands to do this is pi VPN, and I believe it's uh, help. And yep, these are all the different commands that we have available to us with pi VPN. And how we're gonna create our new user real quick is with pi VPN, and we're gonna do dash A for add, we're gonna do dash N, and we're gonna call this client pixel because this is the client that is gonna connect with this Google Pixel. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Type in our password for this pseudo user. There we go. So we can see that it's generated a pixel.conf file. This is where our private key and all the information to actually connect to this VPN is going to be stored. And I'm gonna show you that with a different demonstration. But this right here is pretty cool. If we just do pi VPN dash QR, what this is gonna do is actually pull up a QR code that we can scan with the WireGuard application on the phone. So if I go ahead and hit enter, and we have our client list here. So we're gonna go with our first client, which is currently our only client. Hit enter, and here is this QR code. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so I can see the whole thing. And here we are on the phone with the WireGuard application. All I'm gonna do real quick is hit this little plus button. And you see we have a couple different options. We have the import from file. So if we wanted to, we could have used that .conf right there, or we can scan a QR code. So I'm gonna do this. We're gonna give this QR code a quick scan here. There we go. Tunnel name, I'm just gonna call it Linode Pi and click on Curate Channel. So now it's there available. Now one thing before I go ahead and connect to this VPN, I want to show you what it looks like beforehand. So first I'm loading up It's Foss and we're just gonna open up a random article. This does have ads on it. So right here you see some ads, you see some bottom ads. And we're also gonna check out Speed Test. You can see my main IP address and my internet service provider CenturyLink as well as the ads on the site. If I click on go right here, we can see it connecting. It says I'm in Spokane. And again, we see the Sentry link right there. Now, what I'm gonna do real quick is go back over to WireGuard and let's go ahead and enable Linode Pi. So now I'm connected to this Pi Hole VPN that we just created. Let's head back over to our web browser. And what I'm gonna do real quick is refresh speedtest.net. 
You can see here now it says Linode and it says the IP address of that Linode. If I go ahead and click on go, you can see the location's different and all that. And we're not noticing any ads. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the It's Foss website we had. So right here you can see at least two of the ads that have loaded up. I'm just gonna give this a quick refresh here. And there we go, it has stripped out all of those advertisements. And in addition, if we head back over on our desktop here, what we can do is go over to our dashboard and we can see a lot more information going up. We have over 522 queries and of everything we've tried to access on those two websites, it's blocked 53%, uh, which is really high. If we go over here to our query log, you can see everything that it's allowing through and everything that it's blocking and it's an been answered by the local host on the port uh, 5335. So that is our recursive DNS server working perfectly fine. So at this point, I would call this a success, but one thing I do want to show you real quick is connecting to this using that conf file on a desktop. Right now I'm on Windows. So we're gonna go over to the WireGuard installer here and you can see this works for Mac OS, Ubuntu, Android, various Linux distributions. I do believe you have to do this through CLI on these different distros, but considering everything we've done up to this point, using CLI probably is not a big deal, but I'm gonna demonstrate this on Windows real quick. Let's just grab this WireGuard installer. And here it is, that was a super easy and quick install. And what I'm gonna do real quick is just make another client using the pi vpn a -N -N command. I'm just gonna call this Windows 11, cause that's my current machine. So let's do Windows 11 dash laptop and hit enter. And now we can see the conf file was saved successfully and it is in my home, my user and my configs directory. Now we could use the terminal to pull these files, but one of my favorite things to use here is FileZilla. All I'm gonna need to do is copy this IP address and we're gonna connect to this as a FT or SFTP client. So SFTP, paste in that IP address. The username is Brandon with the password that I inputted. We're gonna go ahead and save that password, hit okay. And here we go. So now if we go into configs, you can see the two client users we have here. So this is the Windows 11 laptop that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead, move this to my desktop. So if I just drag and drop it over here, the file is queued, it has been moved. So now if we open up WireGuard here, we should be able to import this. If we go to a website that we know that I know has a little bit of ads, it's, it's FOSS is going to be that example. So here we go, we see a bottom banner ad, we see a banner ad there, we see ads here on the side. So let's go ahead and use WireGuard and import the uh, tunnel files. Go over to our desktop, here it is, and hit open. So this imported our public keys, the private keys are in the file, our addresses, our DNS, all that is right here. So all we need to do is click on activate and now it is active. So if I go ahead and refresh this page, it should go ahead and pull all the ads out using Pi-hole, which I do believe it has done. All these are gone, the banner ads are gone, so that's looking good. And then again, if we go to the speed test website, we can see that it's registering as Linode with that Linode IP address, hit go. And then it's gonna do this through that Linode VPN. So that was how to set up a Pi-hole DNS server on the node with recursive DNS and a self-hosted VPN. Uh, lots of cool stuff we did today. Uh, <laughs> And you can see even doing this through Linode, our download speeds are really good. The only difference is the ping is slightly higher than it would be if I wasn't using a VPN, but that's gonna be the case no matter what VPN provider you end up using. Uh, with all that, uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you'd like to go ahead and try all this out, there is that $100 60 day credit link down below. Uh, links to anything we mentioned in this tutorial will be included down below as well. And if you enjoy this type of content, any type of cloud computing content, this is a wonderful channel to be subscribed to. So make sure you do subscribe, you ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Uh, with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.